Okay, so the uh, arts and crafts movement, we talked about it focused primarily in the Chicago region, especially with Frank Lloyd Wright, as well as we talked about Stickley out in the east and in Buffalo with the Roy Crofters, but it also spread to California, both in the San Francisco and in Southern California around LA. And the, the main proponents, the most famous proponents of the arts and crafts there were two brothers, Charles and Henry Green. And here they are. Uh, they were uh, very prominent in California, did a lot of work in Pasadena, especially, and throughout Southern California, and uh, uh, really embraced uh, California. It, it was a natural embracing of the arts and crafts movement, and especially a, um, a style of it that embraced the mild weather that California tends to have, lots of sunshine, temperate weather, um, uh, so you see a lot of sleeping porches and a lot more openness than one could do in Buffalo or Chicago uh, through most of the year. Uh, there's also a very strong connection, like Frank Lloyd Wright, to Japanese architecture and especially Japanese construction and woodworking, as we'll see in their most famous house, which is the Gamble House in Pasadena. This dates from 1908 by the two brothers, Green and Green. And here's a view of it. It's, uh, you can see, almost completely clad in wood with uh, the sort of asymmetrical massing, the sort of rambling, spread out character of the mass of the building, like we saw with Frank Lloyd Wright and with other early arts and crafts proponents coming out of England. Uh, we see lower sloped roofs uh, with deep overhanging eaves, also uh, sort of ties in with what we talked about with Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, but a lot of natural woodwork, which um, you know Wright might have worked more in masonry and in stucco, which is uh, a material that's better suited to the uh, winter weathers in Chicago or in the you know, northern hemisphere, whereas in Southern California, you can use this you know, redwood cedar, uh, redwood and cedar shingles and woodwork and uh, not have it deteriorate on you. Over on the, let me point to this with my pointer, on the right side is a huge porch with a big overhang and this is uh, characteristic of, again, the ability to really have a lot of outdoor living space in Southern California, something that Wright really strived for as well. He really wanted to break down that wall between man and nature, <clears throat> but uh, green and green were really able to do it because of the climate they had. Here's another view of the house as you come up. And this is a, this is a house for a very wealthy client. Uh, the Green brothers tended to work for wealthier clients as often did Wright. And so this is you know, more of a mansion uh, than, a, than a modest house for sure. And you can see just how deep the eaves are overhanging using these uh, cantilevered wood beams that come out and the, the brackets, uh, the sort of exposed roof choice and brackets along those eaves. And this is a characteristic of what would be, be known as the craftsman style. Again, that name coming from Gustav Stickley's magazine and the sort of exposed woodwork, the sort of honesty of construction that we see, especially here at the Gamble houses is, is a characteristic of the craftsman uh, style. This is the front entry. Uh, and one of the things I love about this, if you look at the steps on the risers of the steps are vines. And this is a way to incorporate nature into the architecture. Something as mundane as just the front steps are covered in this organic uh, literally organic material and then the architecture at the entry door you can see and i've got a view from the interior in a moment to show you the the organic uh, ornamentation of the art glass at the entry and so like wright and the others we've talked about uh, you know incorporating nature into architecture becomes really important to the green brothers so here's a view of the doorway from the interior and again, uh, almost like a Japanese soji screen, if you remember from the 
fall or yeah fall semester when we talked about Japanese architecture that sort of rice paper that's translucent and lets light through but affords you a little bit of privacy the Soji screen Wright used this uh, a similar approach in his architecture and you can see uh, a real influence of that here at the entry door and with almost a Japanese print character of the art class at the entry as well. And a few views. This is the living room uh, with uh, you know lots of natural woodwork. Again, another characteristic of the arts and crafts that uh, Frank Lloyd Wright was using. Green and green to it quite a bit here. And the um, the style of the woodwork is is a little more Japanese uh, than than even Wright was doing uh, with the uh, bracketing and the peg and mortise, uh, peg and tenon uh, construction and so forth. And then a tiled uh, fireplace that we see here. Uh, the arts and crafts tiles were very popular. A number of manufacturers made those and would often be installed either as floor tile or uh, as fireplace surrounds. And you can see some of the original furniture and light fixtures. This is uh, uh, fully furnished uh, with the original furnishings and light fixtures and so forth. It's a house museum, so you, if you ever get out to LA or Pasadena, you can take a tour through it, it is well worth it. This is the dining room with the art class light fixture over top of that. And again, you can see the similarities in the art class to Wright's work to Macintosh in Scotland and so forth. Uh, you know, all these different people, they may have known about each other through various publications, but uh, for the most part, they were approaching this overall arts and crafts movement in their own unique way. And again, with your assignment, you're looking at how your assigned architect approached arts and crafts or the Prairie School in particular in their own unique way. Here's a detail of some of that carpentry that is distinctive to green and green uh, with sort of the rounded edges and the iron uh, connectors and the pegs and tenons. So this finishes. Uh, Arts and Crafts with Green and Green. So I'm going to stop this recording.